It's time to talk about arrays. Now, arrays are most often used with loops, but they can be used in almost any context. So, what is an array? Well, you can think of an array as essentially a container that holds a fixed number of variables that all have the same data type. So, that the fact that they're just containers that hold variables, you can use these variables independently in any context. Say you want to update an array full of names with a couple of lines of code, or maybe easily save an array of 100 emails to a file. Without having to copy and paste and change a variable here and there, well arrays make doing things like this really easy to do. But instead of going on and on with examples about how arrays are the coolest things since sliced bread, let's just jump right into looking at a few examples and use cases to learn how do we go about using arrays with code. And we're going to do this using two different languages, because I think it can be really helpful for you to see how they can compare and contrast, and plus, you'll pretty much learn two languages at once. So on the left is the language C-sharp using the IDE Visual Studio, which should interest you if you want to get into Windows development or make games using a popular game engine called Unity. And on the right is the language Python 3 using the IDE Visual Studio code, which should interest you if you want to get into more general programming or data science. All right, so here I have two brand new console projects. And if you don't know how to make a new console project in either C-sharp or Python or both, be sure to check out the video in the description. Uh, it's called how to install an IDE. And at the end of that video, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so let's get a bit into arrays. So arrays are simply just a data structure, meaning it's a certain way in which you can structure your different data types. So I won't get into too much in how to use arrays, otherwise this video will turn into just like a long list of examples, but let's jump into this. So the first thing I want to touch on is the different syntax for arrays in both C Sharp and Python. But before we do that, I want you to imagine that you're making some sort of four player game, let's say, and every single player starts with the same amount of HP. So let's create those variables. First, over here on the left in C Sharp, I'm going to get rid of these two lines because I don't need them. They come standard with every console project. And I'm going to initialize an integer. I'm going to call it HP1. I'm going to assign that to be 100, and then I'm going to do it again, assign another HP2 equals 100, and then int HP3 equals 100, and then finally int HP4 equals 100. Great, so we have four different integers for four different players, but with arrays, there's no need for four different variables. We can simply come up here and initialize a new integer array. And the syntax for that goes as follows. First, we want to type out the data type that we want to put into an array, which of course in our case is an integer. And if you want to denote that this is an array, you simply just add a start bracket and an end bracket. This right here is how you denote an integer array data structure. And so after that, we just type out our variable name, which I'm going to call it HP. And then we have to assign to it a new integer array. And then within the brackets here, you have to specify the size of your array, which we have four players. So the size is four. Add a semicolon and you are done. So now that we have our integer array with a size of four, we can now assign values to what's called the elements of that array. And to do that, I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to say HP and then I have to bring back the start in bracket and then type in the element number. Again, it's the size of four. So we're going to start with zero. All right. So you probably just got a little confused on why I started on zero instead of one. Well, in most programming languages, arrays always start on zero. Why you ask? Well, zero is a number two and in computing zero is actually the first number. Not the biggest deal, but a really simple fact that is important to remember because if you start on one, you might get a lot of errors and might want to pull your hair out. So just remember with arrays, zero is always first. Anywho, we have the HP integer array at element zero. And what we want to do is assign 100 to it. And now we just want to do this for all four elements. I'm going to do HP of element one, assign another 100 to it, do HP of element two, if I can type, uh -huh, and then assign 100 to it. And then finally, HP 
Vellum in three and assign 100 to it. Again, quick note, you can see that we ended on the element three, although we initialized an integer array with the size of four. But if you were to count them, you can see that we have four elements here, zero, one, two, and three. And of course, the reason for this offset is because in computing, we always start on zero. It can trip you up a lot at the beginning, but it's something that you'll get used to eventually. Now, I know if this is your first time learning about arrays, it can be quite difficult to get a conceptual grasp on what's going on here. And so I'm gonna walk you through a quick visual. So what we have here is an array with the length of nine. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. This bottom row right here is the index, or the element. They're both interchangeable, but for this course, I'm going to be calling it the element. And this top row is the value at that element. And so, if this were our HP integer array, it would end right here, right at the third element. And after we initialized our integer array, it was filled with all zeros in the value spots. And so, what we did in the code is we simply went through and assigned 100 to every single element in that array. And that conceptually is what's going on with arrays. And that's not just for integers, it's for every single type of array. If you have a string array, a float array, a character array, what have you. Now, with that out the way, we no longer need these variables. We can delete those. And then to prove to you that these work as I say they do, I'm going to write a console.write line so that we can print this to the console. And I'll do HP0 and then semicolon. I'm just going to hit uh, Control C, Control V, copy paste a few times, and simply just change element 0 to 1, 2, and 3. We're also going to need a console.read key. This is so that the terminal doesn't close when we run it. And now I'm just going to come up here to the start, hit the start button, and then bring the console window over to show you that we have four players with 100 HP initialized. Now, last thing I want to mention on this is that if you try to assign a value to an element that is outside of the range for that array, then you will get an error. And to demonstrate that, if I come here and do HP of element four and assign 100 to it, hit the save button, then play, and you can see that it gives us an exception saying pretty much that we don't have an array of this size, therefore you can't assign to the fourth element. So just be mindful of the size of your arrays. Now over in Python, the syntax for arrays are a bit different. And Python actually doesn't even use arrays. They actually use a type of data structure called a list. And you can initialize a list in Python in two different ways. But the syntax for the first one goes as follows. First, we're going to write out the name of our variable, which of course is HP. And then we're going to do equal and then start bracket. And then you just type out whatever values you want in here. So again, we have a four player game with four different players with 100 HP each. So I'm simply just going to write 100 four times with a comma separating each of them. And there you have it. It's, it's done. <laughs> and then to prove it to you, I'm just going to write print and then pass in the whole array HP, hit the play button, and you can see that it prints out an array with four elements. As you can already see, Python has a huge leg up when it comes to doing this type of stuff. In Python, we really only had to do two lines of code. In C Sharp, we had to do, what, eight, nine, ten, about nine different lines of code big difference. And the reason for this, you might ask, is just the design philosophies with the languages. Python is more designed to be really easy to use and do a lot of data stuff. And C Sharp was kind of piggybacked off of the C language, so they had to carry over a lot of stuff that C was already doing. But yeah, you get to pick and choose. There, there are pros and cons with both of them. So that was the first way that you can initialize a list in Python. And here's the second way. I'm just going to come down here and do HP equals empty array. And then it's as easy as HP dot append. And then you're going to do parentheses because it's a function. And then you want to append whatever you want. So I'll append 100 for the first player. And then I'll append again another 100 for the second player. HP dot append for the third player and at last hp.append for the last player. And just to prove to you that does exactly what I say it does, I'm going to do print again hp. Come up here to the top, hit the play button, and you can see that we print out 100, 100, 100, 100 two times. 
Now this function is one of the benefits to using lists over array is that you can initialize an empty list and just add to that list. And C Sharp has one too, but it's a bit beyond the scope for this video. Okay, so let's now talk about the real thing that makes arrays so powerful, and that's array iteration. All right, so this is cool and all. We have all of our player HP in one variable, but what if instead of four players with HP, you had a hundred players with HP? This would get old quick having to write this out a hundred times. Well, that is where for loops come into play. Now, arrays and for loops are like burgers and fries. They're just a perfect combo. So now, let's bring in a for loop so that we can easily assign a value to the elements in our array. So I'm just going to come up here above our uh, variables here, and I'm just going to write out the for loop syntax. So for, and then int i equals zero, and then semicolon, and then if i is less than, we have four elements, so for, and then we're going to do i plus plus if that is true. And then we need to add our code block here. And then we simply just need to write our variable into here. So I'm not going to go too much into the for loop on how it works because I have a full episode about that. So check that out if you're confused. But essentially, on a very layman's level, uh, the for loop, it simply just assigns zero to our integer here. And then if it's less than four, then we're just going to add to it every single update. Uh, and we can then use the I as a location within the for loop. And so with that, if this for loop is less than four, then it will increment, meaning it's going to stop at three which is exactly what we need because our element also stops at three. And so what that means is that now we can change this zero element to I element. And we no longer need these because they will be set with the for loop. In addition to that, because we're also using the array element for printing, we could even come down here and do console.writeLine and then HP of I elements meaning we no longer need these lines either. And so now just to prove to you this works, I'm gonna hit the start button and then I'm gonna bring the window over. You can see that we have four 100s. So now back to the scenario I set up, say instead of four players, you wanted 100. Well, we simply will come to our array size here and we'll change the array size to 100. And we also need to change the iteration for our for loop. We want it to stop at 100. And to prove that to you, I can just hit the play button and then bring the window over here and there is a hundred of hundreds. <laughs> it's a bit hard to tell, but there's a there's hundred of hundreds here. And over in Python, again, the syntax for this is a bit different. So I'm just gonna get rid of these lines because let's just start over. But again, we do have two ways we can go about doing this. And the first way is really, really simple. All you gotta do is do HP and then assign a, an array of 100, but times that by 100. And to prove that to you, I'm gonna do print HP, and then hit the play button, and you can see that we have 100 a hundreds in an array. Simple, easy, and to the point. Gotta love Python. And for the second way, it's a bit more involved. I'm gonna come down here and initialize an empty array. And then we're gonna do a for loop. The syntax is a bit different in Python. Um, for i in range of 100. And then, oops, and then I'm going to come down here. And because it's an empty, well, I said empty array, but it's actually empty list, uh, we're not going to get like the element of anything. We're simply just going to do hp.append and 100. So then down here, all I got to do is print hp, and we should get two arrays of 100, 100, which probably is going to be a bit confusing, but let's do it anyway. Hit play. And yeah, there is the second one and there's the first one. Completely identical, two ways to go about doing it. You as the developer, you have the choice on which one you wanna use. And so yeah, that's pretty much the basics, all you need to know to go about using this data structure. Anything from this point on would just be me listing out a, a million different examples on you know different use cases, but 
pretty much from this point on, it, it's up to you as a developer to get creative and apply this data structure in different ways. And hopefully you are starting to think of some different creative ways on how you might be able to use arrays or arrays and for loops together. But that is everything that you need to know to get started with programming in regards to arrays.